this is a Corsair HX1050 power supply uh, that uh, came out of the trash, of course. Uh, this one's uh, <laughs> uh, as is unusual for a trend, lately actually broken in a very uh, particular way. Uh, I'm not certain how well it's going to show up on camera, but uh, I saw it even before I took it apart. Uh, that uh, that uh, PFC diode there uh, is absolutely exploded. Uh, the case is just uh, is somewhere else. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be showing up, but one of those diodes is there, the other one's just kind of gone. So I figured we'd just uh, try and see if we can uh, fix this thing. If we're lucky, the diode's just uh, gone bust, exploded, and pulled the fuse with it, and just replacing it is going to solve the issue. Um, if there's been some surge on the uh, grid or something, and we're not going to have any further damage. Uh, but, yeah, that, there's a bunch of little stuff that could have gone wrong. We might have some open power assist or something, but you know, let's just dig through this thing and see. And here's the bad diode. Very obviously exploded. Uh, so I checked the data sheet for the other one, and it seems to be a 10 ish amp. Uh, very fast uh, diode, as you tend to find in these power factor correction circuits. And I had to dig around the junk bin and I found a roughly equivalent diode. This one has a slightly lower voltage drop, so it's going to take a lot more load than the original, but uh, I think it'll do as a test. So I figure I'll just uh, slap that one in there and uh, fire it up and see if it does anything. Because, uh, yeah, if, it, if that's enough to get it working, then I don't care. Well, nothing's ever quite as easy as it seems. Uh, I measured around uh, just cursory, and uh, I noticed that there was a short across the uh, PFC output caps, and uh, indeed one of the uh, switching transistors is uh, entirely shorted. Uh, so, these are extremely high end devices. They're labeled the 35N60C3, and uh, these are 650 volt rated MOSFETs uh, at uh, 100 milliohms uh, on resistance, which is just insanely low. Uh, so I don't have any replacement for these in stock, so uh, I figured one of them seems to be okay. I'll just uh, remove the bad one and see if the power supply starts running. Yeah, it shouldn't make too much of a difference, but I haven't double checked, but they're probably just connected up in parallel. So. Uh, the short disappeared when I desoldered them, so hopefully we don't have any further faults. So, yeah, let's just uh, remove that uh, tr the bad transistor and put the new diode in and see if it runs. Alright, I've done as much as I'm going to do. Uh, it still measures uh, shorted across the uh, PFC diodes, even if I've, even though I know both of them are okay. Uh, so, I haven't been able to track down the issue. All the other transistors in the circuit seem to be okay. So, I'm waging it's just going to be connected. Uh, in parallel with a big inductor or something like that, depending on the topology of the circuit. But I can't be bothered to really troubleshoot it in depth because it's just, you know, PC power supply. It's not an, a super expensive device. Uh, so I've just connected up a little test jig now. We're monitoring the 5 volt standby. Uh, should be on this meter here. And uh, i am got the main input connected up to my lab power supply where we should be getting 150 volts when I flick the switch, so uh, we're currently limited to 150 milliamps, so it shouldn't be uh, explode too loudly, but it could still go up in smoke. Let's uh, just find out. Hey, would you look at that? We've got standby voltage. It very nicely ramped up at uh, the current limit, and it seems to have turned on. Now, the question is, that probably means the PFC circuit is either working or shorted. I should actually measure across the output caps to see if we've got a boosted voltage or just 150 volts there. Uh, but yeah, this actually looks very promising. Alright, I just mentioned that the highest voltage we have is just 150 volts, so it could just not be activating the PFC circuit while it's in standby mode, which I suppose might make sense. Uh, but I need just poke a little power switch into the ATX connector, so let's just uh, see if it'll actually uh, activate. Uh, we're monitoring the uh, 12 volt rail right now, so this is where we are more likely to go up in smoke. 
I'll take the relay and the voltage dropped to 64 volts, uh, currently limiting at 300 milliamps. Let's just uh, turn the voltage up a bit. Uh, the current, I mean. Right, we've now got a 1 amp current limit, so if this doesn't start it, then something's still likely to be very wrong. Yeah, it's screeching and drawing an amp at 64 volts. That's not looking very promising. Let's just do 2 amps, which is the maximum power supply we'll do, and then we'll just call it. Uh, still failed. Here we go. Yeah, that's not looking very promising. It's not turning on at all. Hmm, well, that's odd. Uh, if I feel uh, the inductor here, that's actually warm to the touch. So, there's obviously a lot of current being passed through this inductor. Well, that's, that's extraordinary to warm up an inductor like that in such a short amount of time. Pretty much all the energy must be getting uh, dissipated there. Hmm, I think we might be getting somewhere with this actually. So, I thought it was a bit strange when I measured these capacitors and saw that we had the same voltage that we had at the mains input. Uh, and when I measured the rectifiers of a power supply, uh, the primary rectifiers seemed to just couple straight to these two big caps. And that's not the common topology for these, P uh, for these PFC controllers you usually have a switching element taking pretty much unfiltered uh, output from the rectifiers and uh, putting it through this switching converter and then feeding a regulated uh, stepped up voltage into these two caps. So if the PFC controller isn't working uh, you should really not have any voltage across these caps in most cases and they should certainly not be connected up straight to the rectifier. So I checked the datasheet for the PFC controller, I think it's called a uh, CM6800TX, and that was exactly the case. So I knew then that there had to be some element in this uh, uh, power supply which was shorting between the positive on the rectifier and the positive of these caps. And uh, there are a few diodes uh, around in the example schematic, and indeed uh, down in there was a guy, just a normal uh, 5406 uh, 600 volt uh, 3 amp diode, this particular guy, uh, who is absolutely dead shorted. So I've now scavenged out an identical diode out of a similar power supply, and I'm going to put that in, and I'm feeling hopeful that this will actually put it into a working order, because we did see before when we tested it that uh, it actually, the uh, PFC controller would turn on. It, it would, uh, you know, start running, because we were getting a squeal, we were getting a considerable load on the power supply, and it makes a lot of sense that it would be squealing and making a lot of heat and noise when it's essentially just trying to boost the voltage of its own input. Because that's what this shorter diode was doing. It was just connecting the output of a boost converter to the input of a boost converter. And unless you have some kind of magical machine which can boost its own input voltage in this power supply, then that's just not going to work. So I'm now going to pop the new diode in there and... We'll give it another go. All right, we are probing the 12 volt rail, so let's see what happens when we give it 150 volts at an amp. It hasn't gone up in smoke yet, so let's flick the switch. No, that's a step back actually to drop the voltage down to 10 volts now, and it was drawing the full amp, so hmm, not a good sign. Oh, hang on. Hey, there we go. 12 volts. I just kept flicking the power switch a few times and it finally came to life. It's drawing in 90 milliamps at 150 volts DC. I d did uh, take the time to check all the uh, other converters uh, off camera, so I know that we've got 5 volts and 3.3 uh, volts as well. Uh, this is actually one of these nice. Uh, uh, power supplies which just has one giant 12 volt rail and then it has these two little sub converters taking 12 volts down to 5 and 3.3 volts uh, but uh, all the other rails should be there as well let's just double check so 3.3 yeah uh, 5 volts, yeah, that's great 
uh, 5 volts and uh, let's see this should be 5 volts standby and I think this is minus uh, no that's uh, and what's that going to be? grey hmm, that seems to be the power good signal so we have a good ground and that's, that seems to be all over the place hmm it mightn't be too happy about being entirely unloaded though let's give it a slight load and by slight load I mean a Pentium 4 with no RAM or power supply supply but uh, if this mother bomb will turn on uh, it should be putting you know a few tens of watts on this power supply so let's see how the power good signal turns now that's better yeah I'm definitely calling that a fix so what all that remains to do now with this power supply I think is uh, plugging it into a computer that actually works and seeing if it posts Alright, I've added some RAM to our test board, so uh, I've got no idea for uh, how much power this thing's going to draw to start up, so we might not have enough for Grunt in the EX752 to actually power this thing, but let's just give it a go. It's trying. Oh, it's trying so hard. Well, it's just not quite making it. Well, let's see if we can just uh, make it kind of start off a power supply and then just connect the CPU power and see if uh, it'll manage to do something uh, with a bit of delay. I don't know if the board is going to manage to post this way, but we'll find out. Alright. Drawing about 75 watts. So let's just... Uh, Reset this board. Yeah, it doesn't have enough grunt in the power supply. Do we dare put mains into this? Uh, yes, we do. So I'll just <laughs> shove my banana plugs into the power outlet there, and uh, when I flick this switch, we'll have 230 volts coming into the uh, power supply. Uh, all the components should work. I don't know. Let's see. No fire yet. Is it going to post? Drawing 85 watts. Hey, there we go. We've got a picture. I don't know what's more miraculous, that old board working or the power supply working, but that's excellent. So now all, all I've got to do is uh, order the correct components to put into the power supply, because the diode I put in is just incorrect, and it's not going to run very long on uh, one uh, switching transistor, but that certainly is a fix. Excellent. So there you go. That's one unexploded Corsair HX1050 and uh, it really wasn't too much stuff wrong with it, just three components. I'm a bit surprised because when you have these guys going bad they tend to eat the switching IC as well but it seems to have survived and even all the driving stuff seems to have survived so that's excellent news. Uh, I mean this power supply is certainly worth repairing at this station so I don't have to do anything really super advanced to fix it. So I'm just going to go ahead and order well, those two guys, they're probably going to be bloody expensive because this guy is very, very high-end. 100 milliohms at 650 volts, jeez. But yeah, it's going to be worth it. I think this was like a $200 power supply when it was new. So it's not going to come in handy somewhere. So, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio.